Um, so I want to come to Jeremy Brown first. Jeremy was a Liberal Democrat member for Taunton Dean for, uh, for 10 years, from 2005 to 15. Um, I think he held a number of, of posts in opposition on the Home Affairs Select Committee and so on. And then in 2010, uh, was made a Minister of State at uh, the Foreign Office, uh, where you seem to have covered pretty much half the world, as far as I can tell. We've got sort of Southeast Asia, South America, and, and a load more. Uh, and then moved on to uh, the Home Office in 2012 to be Minister for uh, Crime Prevention. So, Jeremy, what are, what are your thoughts on this, particularly as sort of coming in as a, a new minister in 2010? Um, thank you, by the way, for the presentation. Hello, everybody. Um, I think this was probably uh, in part a feature of it being coalition. So it's very hard for people to plan in advance, although I have no experience of coming into government any other time. Uh, but my first-hand experience was it was uh, almost endearingly chaotic. And I was, <coughs> I'd gone back to my constituency in Taunton because I started the week in a very marginal seat. So I was thinking by the weekend whether I'd be an MP, let alone whether I'd be a government minister. And then we went straight, and Chris Hume is in the front row, but he was right at the centre of all of this. I was relatively peripheral. I was one of the 57 Lib Dem MPs. But we were involved in this sort of rolling process of trying to uh, see if we'd be in government and on what terms. And I eventually got back to my constituency where my house had been abandoned. Anyone who's fought an election, you know, the grass is about that high in your back garden. And I went into Tesco's to buy some milk because I'd run out. And I was looking at the front page of all the papers, which had David Cameron and Nick Clegg on the front in the Downing Street garden. And my phone rang, and I answered the phone, and it was the Downing Street switchboard. It says, Deputy Prime Minister, I'd like to speak to you. It took me quite a while to work out that it wasn't John Prescott <laughs> or whatever, whoever it was. Anyway, it was Nick Clegg. And I thought, I can't speak to him in Taunton, Tesco. So I went out into the car park. And he said, I'd like you to be a minister in the Foreign Office. And I said, fantastic. Thank you. Congratulations, by the way, on becoming Deputy Prime Minister. And um, I said, out of, out of curiosity, will I be a Minister of State or an Under Secretary of State? And he didn't appear to know there was a distinction between the two. <laughs> Which matters a lot to us junior ministers, but maybe not to Deputy Prime Minister. And I said, never, I'm sure this will be, be resolved. And uh, I said, what, what will my responsibilities be? And he didn't seem to have the faintest idea what they would be either. In fact, and, uh, and so I rang my mother. I actually went, I, I went back and got some milk because I still wanted to have a cup of tea. And then I rang my mum. Anyway, and then about half an hour later, private office rang me up and they said, Minister, congratulations, very foreign office. Yes. We're all awaiting your arrival. And I said, I'm standing in the garden at home in Taunton talking to my mum. But I'll come and see you tomorrow. So that's what it was like. So it was, uh, and when I got to the department, the nice, I mean, I had responsibility primarily for our relations with Asia and Latin America. So all the bits of the world where progress is being made and where Britain pays virtually no attention to. You know. And, um, and uh, that was only by a sort of process of default, really. I had a good private secretary who managed to swap overseas territories with Asia. Which I thought was. <laughs> that was a good swap, wasn't it? And I got to keep the Falkland Islands, which is the one overseas territory you're probably most interested in keeping. So I lost Ascension Island and the Pitcairns, and I came to China and Japan and South <laughs> um, But it wasn't due to an amazingly elaborate process of design. So that was my initial uh, experience. And uh, I suspect it's probably to a degree echoed by lots of other people. It's also interesting when I went to the Home Office a couple of years later. Uh, it wasn't that much better, actually. I, I said there were. Two, oh, so Minister of State and Home Office—that would be. Um, well, I much preferred being a Foreign Office Minister, Home Office Minister, and I was better at being a Foreign Office Minister, Home Office Minister. So I recognised that. But I did say when I was appointed, um, there are traditionally two main Minister of State jobs in the Home Office: Police Minister and Immigration Minister. I am assuming Theresa May is not enthusiastic about having a Lib Dem as Immigration Minister. Does that mean I'll be a Police Minister? And no one seemed to know. So anyway, I turned up in the department and I was neither of those. Um, no one really <laughs> quite knew what I was going to do. Uh, anyway, so um, I think there is scope for quite a lot more. Uh, I mean, it, it is a bit of an issue, actually, not since um, John Major, really, have we had a, have we had a <coughs> senior, senior member of the government who's actually been a junior minister. <coughs> so perhaps it, it is a little bit of a product of people not understanding the tiers of government below the very top level. And I, I'm sort of halfway on the sort of HRification of ministerial appointments. So I, I mean, one of the things quite nice to be a politician is you don't have to be subjected to 360 degree appraisals and all that sort of corporate, ugh, which is just so awful. On the other hand, I did turn up and I had a private office of five people. And I said, I don't want to be 
rude, but I haven't got the faintest idea what any of you do, and I'm sure it's all hugely important, but will you go round the table and tell me what you do and just explain the basic mechanics of a ministerial office? And um, actually, the Foreign Office is very good. They're very good at uh, authoritative you know, content briefing. Probably not so good at sort of modern HR practice, but I'm... Um, uh, I, I came to find it quite easy to work with them very quickly, but I started from a complete standing start. That's a very long answer. <laughs> it was fine. Great. Um, 